Hello Cruising World, Mick the Suit Guy with you. It's Monday. Monday is Tips Day and I've been pretty negative the last couple of weeks on tips. I'm determined to make this one a very positive tip show until I get to the end. So uh, one thing that makes me happy is money. So I'm going to give you a tip on foreign currency. As you can see, I have some here because we cruise and we keep them. So I've got some, um, these are Vietnamese dong. This is a Thailand bat, Singapore dollars, Danish krona, and the best currency in the world, British pounds. Why do I have all these? Well, nothing really to do with a tip. I just wanted to show that I have lots of foreign currency here, but it's not a huge amount of money. I mean, this, <laughs> this dong, right? It looks like a load of money, right? That is 610,000 dong, which is about $27 leftovers from the last cruise. My point being, like all these amounts here, well, the Danish one is different because this is not leftover. This is the currency they need in Greenland. And if anybody knows what happened to me in Greenland, they'll know why this is a very sore subject. This never got used because we didn't get to Greenland because, well, we're not gonna go into that. Anyways, the reason for this is to be careful not to overbuy foreign currency when you're going otherwise you get stuck with it and you can't do anything with it luckily for me i'm going to be going back to england again i have another cruise booked to greenland i'm going to thailand in 2026 on celebrity i'm going back to vietnam in october on the panorama and i'm also going to singapore on the panorama in october too so i can use them again but if I didn't have that situation happening, and most people, let's be honest, if you go on these sort of trips, you're not an idiot like me. You only do it once. Uh, you're going to get stuck with that money and you exchange it back and you'll get like half of what it's worth because they have stupid exchange rates. So my tip is do your research and make sure that you get the appropriate amount of money, which is basically as little as possible. Uh, we literally could have got away with none in most of these places. Like, I do know when we went to Vietnam and we were in um, Ho Chi Minh, I think it was. We were by the post office where the Notre Dame Cathedral is. I'm pretty sure that we went all over the place. I'm losing track of where I was. Pretty sure it's Ho Chi Minh. Um, they would have taken dollars anyway. Very good tip for you, by the way. If you are planning on using dollars in any of these countries, make sure they are dollar bills, whatever denomination, in extremely good condition. We found this out. We don't do carnival tours, we do private tours. We'll come to that soon. They will take dollars, but they will only take them if they're in perfect condition because the bank will not accept any dollar bills with tears or worn, gotta be pristine and new looking. So very important that you do that. But try not to get stuck with these. My advice, first of all, credit card, you know, know where you're going. And if most of the places you're going are credit card, you know, places, use a credit card rather than local currency. Make sure you're not gonna get charged a fee by your bank or your credit card company for, you know, using a foreign credit card, in v an American credit card in Vietnam, for example. Most people won't charge you that fee, but like my Wells Fargo account does, um, my credit card doesn't. So. We try not to use the Wells Fargo, we use the credit card, blah, 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 obviously. Um, if you're doing tours and you know the tour operator, this is where it won't work if you do it through the ship because you'll never be able to contact the tour operator. More of that soon. But if you book through a private operator, you can contact that person and say to them, how much money do you think we should bring cash? Will they accept dollars? And you know, answer all, Ask all the questions you want to ask and they will give you an amount. Now we deliberately went over because we knew we were going back to all these places. Um, and we're actually gonna have to get more, I think, slightly more. But I personally think if you budget for about, especially in some of these islands like Vietnam and Thailand where it's so, so cheap, 20 to $25 a day, you should be in pretty good shape. You're prepaying your tours most of the time. It's really just tip money and spending money and stuff isn't that expensive. And if it is that expensive, it's going to be in a shop that takes a credit card. So, you know, you run the risk. 
you know, where do you draw the line? It's a, I, I don't really have an answer to that. But I personally, having been to these places, would say, you know, on a cruise, you're in port for what? Eight hours, right? Some of these foreign ports, like when we went on the celebrity cruise, we did overnights. We did an overnight to Hanoi. We did an overnight to Bangkok. So we had a bit more time. So we needed a bit more money. But most of the time, we're on a one day trip. When we go on the Panorama in October, we have like eight hours in Philippines. We have eight hours in Malaysia. We have eight hours in Guam. And Guam takes dollars anyway. We have about eight hours in Vietnam. And we already have tours booked. Well, in Philippines, I'm going to meet our wonderful friend, Joanne, the ex-bartender on Carnival. I think she still does back and forth with her lovely husband, Jing. And uh, she's off of work right now. So she's going to come and take us around the Philippines. Well, you know, capital of the Philippines. Uh, which, which I'm mental blocking Manila. Oh, my goodness. She's going to pick us up and take us around. So we may have a little bit of an extra tip for her because she's my tour, tour guide. Anyway, that's it. Don't get too much. Often, when you do these private tours, which we're going to cover in a little while anyway, they will recommend how much local currency to bring. You know, judge by that. Now, you might want to add some for the tour guide. Remember also, $100 to them is an absolute fortune. This is going to sound horrible. $20 tip is perfectly fine. You know, you don't need to tip big, big. $20 is a big. $20 tip in Vietnam is like a $100 tip over here, in my experience. If you want to tip big, tip big. You know, you might want to have it there just in case you might want to get extra money. And if the tour guide's really nice, you know, give them what you got left at the end of the day. One thing we thought about was if you're going back on the ship and it's a ship that's going to be doing those tours, you know, back and forth, tip the bartenders on the ship, tip the room steward on the ship because they'll be going back to that port. They want dollars mostly. They really do. But they're not going to turn anything down. So there's ways of getting rid of it. But you don't want to try and get stuck. And, and especially for us, when we went on that Celebrity Solstice cruise, that was the last one doing that route. After that, they were going to Australia and then they were going back to America to do uh, Alaska. So um, they weren't going back to these countries. They would have still taken it, I am sure, but it wouldn't have been as helpful because they'd have had to cash it all in. But anyway, so that's just a little tip on uh, looking out for your pound. How much do I have here in pounds? 20... 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Oh, I got £100. Another thing, by the way, I have this here. Uh, download an app like this. It's a currency converter app. It was so helpful for us when we were when we were ashore. And it allows me to put in like six or seven different currencies like everywhere on the cruise. Um, I'll, try if, I'll try and remember to put a screenshot of this up. I am hopeless of remembering. But... Uh, I could type in like 50 US dollars and it would give me the equivalent in all these local currencies. Obviously, it's a guide. It's not exact, but it's fairly close and it would give you an idea of what each one is worth. So uh, hopefully, as I'm telling you this, there's a screenshot you're looking at. But I'm not going to lie. I've just recorded five or six of these tip programs in a row. And this is the last one of the five or six I'm recording. I may not remember. Let's see if I did. 610,000 Vietnam dong. That is, I told you earlier, didn't I? Where am I? Vietnamese dong. 610,000. $24.12. 100 British pounds. $128.46. I happen to know this is, no, I can't remember. 50, 100, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200. 211 Singapore dollars. Again, we bought extra last time because we knew we were going back. Uh, so that is way more than we sh I would normally recommend. 211 Singapore dollars is 157 US. This is Bach. 100, 200, 300, 320, 340, 360, 380. 380 Thai Bach. Oh, a whopping $10.50, an untouched, pristine Danish krona, which I actually don't have on here, but I know this is about $100. $100, $200, $300, $400, $500, $600, $700, $800, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1
uh, and Philippines on here. Because that's where we go. And Guam textiles. Anyway, hope that that was a bit of a helpful tip for you. Um, God, I'm waffling lately. You know why I'm waffling? Because I don't have new tips from anybody. And it's hard coming up with tips myself. So sometimes you get a bit desperate and you're almost literally making stuff up. What have I got next? Oh, yeah, passports. This is an oldie but goodie, but I was thinking about this the other day. I just applied for my citizenship. So seven to eight months, they said it would take. I probably applied a month ago. So in six to seven months, I should be a dual citizen of the United States and the United Kingdom uh, if I pass that stupid test that most of you would fail. Anyways, I was thinking about it with passports and my passport, my green card expires July next year, which is why I did it. Uh, I've lived in America longer than I lived in England. It's just time and I keep both passports, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to do it. But I looked at my passport and it, and it made me remember to remind everybody. Number one, uh, make sure when you cruise, your passport is valid for at least six months after the cruise or they may not let you on, but they won't let you on. It's not Carnival makes that decision. It's the government. Um, also, note that that real ID comes in, I think it's next May. So that's for flying and stuff out the country or domestically and everything. You need to get a real ID by next May, not the old ID. So give yourself time to get that. Um, and it was, a, it was a funny thing I thought about. This is one thing I've always said. Do you know when your passport expires? Don't look. Don't look. When does your passport expire? Now go look. Well, look after this video, but probably going to be wrong unless you use it a lot. Now, I'll double down on that because this caught me out one time. When does your driving license expire? Do you know? Some of you will know, but I will almost guarantee many people watching this will not know when their driving license expires. Maybe I'll help. Oh, it expires in three days. I have zero idea when mine expires. I just hope they send me a reminder. I have no idea whatsoever. I know when my passport expires because I use it all the time. Uh, 2027 is when my passport expires. So I've got plenty of time left on that. Uh, oh, is it 2029? Julie, one of us is 27, one of us is 29. I know both of us have plenty of time because I fill out every time I check in for a cruise. But yeah, just make sure your passport is not close to expiring. I've had a few people lately call me up. Oh, God, the cruise is in two weeks. What do I do? And you haven't got a birth certificate or, you know, so it's a panic. So when you very first book your cruise, at the moment you book that cruise, go to your travel documents and check that they are not only valid at that moment or that you know where they are, but they're going to still be valid when you cruise. They have to passports. And we're talking passport book here, not passport card. I don't know the full rules on a card. I'm assuming it's the same. And there is a difference between a passport card and a passport book. Passport card is mainly just basically countries that touch America. Passport book is for people all around the world. Um, make sure they are valid for six months after your trip. After. No. First thing you should do when you book a cruise, if you ask me, is to do that. All right. So number three, this is where we're going to get a bit negative. Because I like to. I just can't. These days, I try. What's the... I'm getting old and honorary in my... I'm getting close to 60. I do have a birthday cruise on my 60th on the celebration. If you want to join us. I talk about it a lot. We're going on the celebration to celebrate my 60th birthday at Celebration Key. Because that is the day we will actually be at Celebration Key. Is on my 60th birthday on the celebration celebrating and boy am i going to celebrate if i make it because the way i live my life who knows you know by the time you watch this i'll have been for my third or fourth colonoscopy because uh, i have to go a lot we won't go into that this is whatever uh but yeah colonoscopies galore so who knows hopefully we'll make it just kidding of course i'll make it to 60 and then we're gonna have an amazing time so if you want to join me my email is coming up at the end of this video and uh we can add you i've already got a lot of cabins sold uh, but the more the merrier. Gonna go hog wild, as they say. And if you know me, you know I'm not exaggerating. All right. Anyway, shore excursions. And I challenged everybody last week uh, to try and guess what it would be I would talk about at the end of this one. And yes, it is shore excursions. And I just want to put a reminder out there that 
you do not have to do carnival excursions or celebrity excursions or that you can do private excursions the cruise lines try and scare you by saying oh if you if your excursion gets back late if you book it through us we'll wait for you if you don't we're going to leave without you now you'll have seen stories recently online of various people that didn't make it back to the ship and the comment is always the same that is why you always book for the cruise line never book on your own blah 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 I will 99.9% .9 guarantee those people that missed the cruise did not book their private tour carefully enough to know what time they had to be back at the ship by. They went ashore and got drunk, didn't even do a tour or whatever. When I do a private tour, I always make sure that that tour is going to be back at least two hours before the ship leaves. They'll also put a guarantee to get you back to the ship. And that if they don't get you back to the ship, they will get you to where you need to be they will pay everything think about it from a tour company's point of view if they get you back late and you miss a ship and you do a review online they're going to be out of business very quickly they know this they're very careful i've been doing this forever i've never one time in dominica last year we got stuck in traffic and we got back an hour before the ship so we got delayed an hour I will also guarantee you there were other people in the same traffic that were on carnival excursions that they would have waited for regardless but we were a little bit close that one time that is it that is the only time we were in belize once we were doing a river tour and our boat got a bit of a leak and we had to move from our boat to another one we still got back an hour and a half before the cruise that's the closest we've ever been we never have a problem so carnival have upped the price of their excursions lately so much it's getting ridiculous i used to go to Amber Cove and I would get those cabanas when they were $349. Now they're $599, right? They have upped the price of excursions so much. It's getting ridiculous. It's not worth it a lot of the time anymore. Here's the difference between Carnival and all cruise lines, right? We were on the celebrity cruise we did, I forget where it was. We did a private tour we drove two hours into town and got back. We were plenty of time to get back on the ship. We walked past the celebrity tour in town. There was me and Julie and our private tour guide. And we paid one and a half times as much for a private tour guide as they paid individually for this tour. There were 50 of them, at least, walking in single file through the town with their, with their celebrity solstice stickers on. And they all looked miserable. They couldn't hear what the guy was saying because it's one long line only the people at the front could hear in a crowded area well and i've got it on video well we're all just listening to our guide just we're all me and julie perfectly i was we're doing a big group cruise next november on carnival horizon now i've gone to trying to book a load of excursions for everybody we're going to aruba bonaire and curacao still spots available if you want to go email me at the end and i'll get you info right now we have almost 150 people on that cruise. It's going to be epic. So I was looking for things to do in Curacao. And I was just going through the internet, just getting ideas. I'm actually going there in December on the horizon on the same cruise. And I'm going to be going ashore in Curacao and trying to speak to people about tours for our big one next year. Uh, so I'll put a video out about that then. But uh, I found this duck tour. And it looked really good. It was only two hours. But it was an hour on land, an hour at sea. And, you know, it looked kind of cool. And if you if you chartered the boat, it was 33 people. It was $63 a person. So I emailed them and I said, you know, and not very often as a travel agent, what I typically do on these groups is I get my commission, which is more than enough for me. When I do these excursions, I ask them, don't give me a commission, give me a discount for everybody else. So they'll, they'll typically give me like a 5 to 10% discount. So say they give me a 5% discount, it would put it down to $60 a person, which is what's happened on all the other excursions I've booked. Um, so say $60 a person. They replied saying, apologies, they cannot. When there's a carnival ship in town, they're contracted out to do a carnival. But fair enough, whatever. You know. So I went on carnival on my December the 7th cruise coming up this year to see how much they were charging. And for the same tour, $90. Right? $90. $89.99 to be $90. That's quite $90. Now, 
there was a difference, which which is important, as I'll get to in a second. Um, they did show you got a welcome fruit or rum punch, which is going to be a little plastic cup with a little drink in it that you can have before you get on, right? That's it. Why do they do these things? Because of their price guarantee. Has anybody ever been paid out on a price guarantee, by the way? So what, they, what a price guarantee is, you have to book the tour with Carnival first, right? Before the cruise. You've got to book the tour with Carnival. So you've got to pay the $90 first. Then you have to find the other tour, right? Prove it's the exact same tour. Submit a form that they'll get back to you in about a week. Five, up, it's set up to five business days to let you know if you're going to get the difference. And the difference is going to be 110% of the difference in the price, but not in cash, as onboard credit. So in this occasion, it wouldn't be the price I was going to get. The regular price was $69.99, so $20 difference, right? So if you booked it individually, you know, I couldn't show them the 63 or the 60 because that was based on me booking the entire boat, which I would have done easily. I had more than enough people to do it, but not the point. So they would have been $20 plus the 10%, so $22 in onboard credit they would have got back if the tour was exactly the same. And here's why I don't think they would have done it. They would have said the tour is different because you cannot book it that day. You can only book it on the day that Carnival's not in, right? And you got a free welcome drink with Carnival. You didn't get the free welcome drink on the regular tour, which you did not. They specifically said no drinks on that one. So that's why they wouldn't do it. So be very aware of that. 110%. It has to be the exact same tour. You have to already book it through Carnival and pay their rates and then hope when you submit that form, they accept it. So a mm, bit dodgy. You could probably cancel the tour after that if you didn't get your response. I don't know. Um, but, you know, just be aware of that. The three companies I like to recommend are Project Expedition. See, a lot of people use Viator um, and there's nothing wrong with Viator. I just feel like they're just a big, big company, and I prefer working with smaller companies that give you better personal service. And Viator, because they, they got linked with TripAdvisor, so they're just massive. So I don't, they're not my first choice. Nothing wrong with them though. If you like Viator, absolutely fine. And they do tend to be, in my experience, a little bit pricier than the others, but not, not a huge, not all the time. Um, Project Expedition is my go-to for individual tours. Like if it's just two of you cruising or four of you, whatever, uh, Project Expedition, what I love about them is, and this is a good and bad thing, but when you book a, a tour through them, 99.9% um, .9 of the time there's a you know, cruise guarantee that you'll get back to the ship on time. It's actually written into the, you'll see it on there. But they don't actually pay the tour operator until the tour happens. So if you have to cancel, you're pretty much guaranteed getting your money back. Up, you know, Look at the rules, what time you have to cancel until, but they're giving you the money back the company is not giving it back to Project Expedition to give back to you. That's a good and a bad thing because the cash flow situation for the other side is not great. And I see that. But for me, it's a great situation. And they have a lot of choices of different tours. You can actually go in there and type in under their link that says Shore Excursions. And I have a whole video on Project Expedition on my channel. Just look for it. But you can actually go by your cruise, what excursions are available in each port. They're not always available, but, you know, like, Half Moon K is not going to have excursions available, but they're there. If you are going more in a group or you just want your own private thing and you've got a little bit more of a budget, you can do two companies. One is called Tours by Locals and one is called, uh, I think it's Get Your Guide. Get Your Guide or Get My Guide. Oh my God, mental blocking. Tours by Locals is our number one go-to, but we've noticed that Get Your Guide is out there as well. They're very similar. This will be a place you can go to they and then you can find a guide pretty much anywhere in the world they're like the hub of it all and they link out to the rest of the world so if you're a tour guide in uh, vietnam in hanoi you can contact tours by locals they will take a cut you know obviously kind of like a carnival in a way um but they will put your advertisement they will put your information out there that i would never find otherwise right so i can go on tours by locals I can type in where I'm going, when I'm going, and I'll get a list of all the guides and the tours they offer. And they're nearly always flexible with those tours um, on what you want to do. They can be a little bit pricier because it's just pri they're private tours. Um, very often it's for two to six people. Sometimes they get bigger buses and they can do more people. Obviously, the more people, the cheaper it will be. But, 
you can do your price comparison if you did it on your own between what it would be for just two of you compared to what you would pay on Carnival. It would definitely be cheaper on Carnival, I would imagine. But factor in the fact you're getting that private service, it's just the two of you, they'll go wherever you want. You're not going to get stuck in crowds and everything. Sometimes it's worth paying a bit extra. When we went on the celebrity cruise, we did private tours everywhere apart from one place where we really were a bit worried because the timing, we weren't in port for very long and they didn't want to get stuck in Pattaya, which is near Bangkok. So uh, we did a ship tour that day and boy, was it crowded. The other days it was just us, it was beautiful. So, you know, there's that side to it. So it, it, listen, if you're set and you're that worried that you want to do the ship tours and that's the way you are, absolutely fine. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just trying to let it out there that I don't buy the, if they're not back on time, the ship's going to leave. Yes, it happens, but how many times does it happen when you plan correctly? How many times does it happen where the people didn't plan correctly and they didn't leave a buffer to get back to the ship and it's basically their own fault that the tour didn't get back? You know, we try and do more private ones or group ones or smaller group so that there's not 50 other people on that that don't care what time they get back. So if you plan correctly, never had a problem. But if you feel comfortable booking through the cruise line, boom, go ahead. Uh, I'll be blunt. If you want to overpay, over, over, uh, overpacked, and I'll leave you with one example and then I'll get out of here. Uh, the one I always give, food tours. San Juan is the example I always give. Private food tour we did in San Juan once with a local company. Happened to be just us. It's not always like that. Sometimes there could be 10, 12, even up to 20 people, whatever. We paid $100, whatever it was. Carnival had one for $120. And while we were doing our tour, our guide pointed out the Carnival tour and told us that they paid more through Carnival than you paid through us. Carnival took a massive cut. We're getting way less than you paid us. And because of that, they're only going to, I think it was four spots, while we're going to seven. Because they couldn't afford the other spots because Carnival took so much money. Just a thought. All right. Next week, Dr. Positive. Dr. Positive. And that's not really negative, just giving you options. Plus, I need more tips. I'm running out. I've run out. Clutching at straws. Send me yours. My email is coming up at the end of this video. Uh, subscribe. I do these videos every Monday. Well, at least, uh, you know, this is the last one. If I don't get more tips from other people, it's over. We've done it for a couple of years and we're running out. We're running out, everybody. I need yours on any cruise line. Any cruise line. Give me your tips. Cruising traditions. What do you do every cruise? Send me those as well. Be aware. I do not read them in advance. I read and react. Just ask Dave if you want to know what that's like. 99% of the time, as long as your name isn't Dave, I'm nice. Or Julie's in the mix now. My wife. Uh, but subscribe. Hit that little notification bell if you want to get a notice when these come out. But every Monday this comes out. Every Thursday a cabin video will come out. And every Saturday a generic video like a port tour or a ship tour or something will come out. Hopefully. As long as I've got the content, we will do it. And with that, I've got to put this money away now before Judy gets hold of it. I will see you later, Cruising World.
Any questions? Email me anytime, cruisingsuitguy at gmail.com. I promise I'll reply as soon as possible. Want to book a cruise or any type of travel? We are travel agents. Check out our site, elitetravelconnection.com or email me, mick at elitetravelconnection.com. We are here for you. Finally, subscribe, please. Pretty please. You know you want to. Go on. I won't beg you. Okay, I'm begging. Please. Subscribe! Thank you.